right, so we're going to start with some open source intelligence gathering. So we're not going to directly talk to any of our other virtual machines at this point. And for this section, you are allowed to run these exercises against any domain that you like. This part is perfectly legal. All we're really doing is searching information that is available publicly on the internet. So you don't have to just do the same ones I do. Any domain is fine. So your domain, your company's domain, your worst enemy's domain, anything you like. But of course, when we do switch back and start talking to our virtual machines again, we will want to keep that within the lab because we will be actually performing attacks. So we need to keep that within the lab, but this open source intelligence gathering section we can do against any company we like. All right, so I'm going to try a couple different ones. Um, I'm going to do bulbsecurity.com because that's my company, but it's naturally pretty small, so we won't get quite as interesting of results as we might with some larger organizations, so I might switch back and forth. But again, feel free to run these exercises against anyone you like. In fact, it'll be much more interesting for you if you do. So first thing I want to know is just a little bit of basics about it. Um, so I'll do a who is lookup on a domain. So I'll start with bulbsecurity.com. So this is going to give us information basically from the registrar of who owns this domain. We might be able to get some interesting information out of this. Then again, we might not. Looks like bulbsecurity.com is a GoDaddy domain. People tell me I should switch it, but I don't really have the time to go through all the trouble right now. Um, but it is registered with domains by proxy. So basically I pay a little bit extra to hide my information on the who is lookup. So you may find that this is true with the organizations you work with. But it just basically says that GoDaddy owns it. But I actually have another one that I set up badly on purpose because you may find that you can find some interesting information with who is. So if I look at my name, drugweitman.com. Look at the who is look up for this one. A little bit more interesting. Like we have an email address. That's not my primary email address. It's kind of just a dummy email address. But this is actually where I used to live. It's not my apartment anymore, but at the time it was. So it's kind of inviting unwanted attention here. So it even has the apartment number where I lived at the time, and that was also my phone number at one point as well. So none of this information is still true, so if you come and try and show up at my door, you'll be sorely disappointed. But this is an example of what it may look like if they don't use domains by proxy, then information about the individual or organization is theoretically available here. So you may find well, mine are the same for the admin and the tech, but you may find some phone numbers, email addresses, even locations. So if you're going to do any phishing later to try and get people to click on links and emails or do some cold calling to try and get more information, you might be able to find a good place to start here. Like that was a valid number email address. I never check it, but it's still valid. So just a little bit there. Another thing I might be interested in is some DNS names or domain name services. So probably there's www.bulbsecurity.com, but I wonder if there's like maybe mail.bulbsecurity.com or ftp.bulbsecurity.com or any other bulbsecurity.coms. So that would be the next point I might want to take a look at. So there's a few different tools built in for DNS lookups. Like there's dig, there's NS lookup. The host command can do it all too. So let's start with NS lookup. If you have one that you'd rather use, by all means, just use that. But if I did like an NS lookup on bulbsecurity.com, it would give me the IP address of bulbsecurity.com, or www.bulbsecurity.com rather. So there's its IP address. I do use shared hosting, so there's also the IP address for several other 
posts as well, as we'll see a bit later. So I might also be interested in things like mail servers, if I did like an NS lookup. Just hit enter, and then set type equals mx, and then said bulbsecurity.com. mx is short for basically mail server in DNS speak, so it's going to ask what are the mail servers for bulbsecurity.com. And they are all actually Google servers in this case, so those will probably be out of scope for your pen test. Chances are you won't be able to go after Google Apps, but if your organization that you're testing hosts their own mail servers, those may be in scope. Additional hosts we might be able to attack, so let's quit. And quit's not the right answer, how about exit? And so if we do an NS lookup and set type equals MX again, And say we want, say, how about Cisco.com, go after one of the big ones. It looks like they have their own mail servers. And again, I don't own Cisco.com, but all I'm doing is doing a basic query here. So I'm not crossing the line of legality just by asking them what their mail servers are. If I actually started attacking the mail servers at Cisco.com, that would be bad. But just for this part, again, you're welcome to try different organizations. And maybe you also want like name servers, so I could say set type equals ns for name server and security.com and just some I don't host my own domain controllers either. So it's just domain control.com, but again if I did cisco.com looks like they in fact do host their own name server. So again, this would be additional hosts that might be in scope for our pen test. So let's exit out of here. So naturally, my question would be, can I get all of the hosts that are owned by such and such a domain? Would it be possible for me to just get a list? Hopefully the answer to that is no. There is something called a zone transfer for DNS, which as the name implies, it involves taking the zone for a domain and transferring it, at least theoretically, between different name servers, like the primary would transfer to the secondary or other slaves, but you could actually just get it, if it's set up to do so, get it to send the zone file to you as well, so we could get complete lists of all of the domain names and their associated IP addresses for a certain domain, but hopefully this should be turned off. It is definitely a best practice, and if I ever see it on any of my clients, I always test for this, but I have seen it come up a, on a rare occasion, and I definitely let them know that they should turn that off, but typically you'll see that this is turned off, but let's do the host command for this one. Again, there's different ways to do this. First thing I need to know is the type is name server, so dash t in this case. And I'll tell it I want the name servers for bulbsecurity.com. So again, those are my two domain controllers. And then if I try and do a domain transfer or domain zone transfer, the correct syntax is dash l. And then the domain that I want, so that's bulbsecurity.com. And then I tell it the name server to try and transfer from. My guess would be domaincontrol.com does not allow zone transfers. I'll try the other one as well. And indeed, it doesn't allow me to do a zone transfer. But an example of a domain that is set up to allow zone transfers is zonetransfer.me. So here's the name servers for zonetransfer.me. Again, I use that dash T and NS. To ask for the name servers, and then I can do host dash L to ask for the zone transfer if it's available. So I tell it I want 
information about zone transfer.me. And let's start with the first one. SN, or NS rather, ZTN2 dot PG dot ninja. And there we have it. So we have, it's like they have an office in Australia, and in DC, dead beef, email, internal, office, IPv6, OWASP, so mail client, VPN, all TCP ports open, the so different IP addresses there, and their associated fully qualified domain names. So this would give us additional potential targets if we were pen testing zone transfer not me. But of course this should be turned off, but it's something I always check for. But if we can't do that, our question is, can we still find additional fully qualified domain names, additional hosts we could attack? And Naturally, the same way we do with everything else, we can always just let the computer basically check for us. I mean, we could sit there and ask for, you know, what is... How about NS lookup, say, ftp.bulbsecurity.com. Well, there is an ftp.bulbsecurity.com. What about mail.bulbsecurity.com? Okay, it looks like it at least goes somewhere. How about blah.bulbsecurity.com? Nothing there. So we could just go through every possible domain name we could think of, or we could again let the computer do it for us. This is pretty typical in anything computer science really is. Computers are really good at doing repetitive tasks that are really boring to people, so we could give it a list of domains and then have it basically cycle through and do an NS lookup or equivalent on all of them and see what comes back with an answer and what doesn't. So naturally, some people wrote some tools for that. One of them is Fierce. So it is a Perl script. It has, we need to use the DNS switch with the domain after it. So dash DNS and bulbsecurity.com won't come up with very much, so how about microsoft.com for this one? So one that has a few more domain names than mine does. So it tries its own transfer, it doesn't work. So now it's going through and basically the first part of the fully qualified domain name, it's basically running through a file and you can give it a different file for that, but it's using its default file. And indeed, there are quite a lot of hosts for Microsoft.com. So it's just putting like x.microsoft.com, probably a for loop where x is something from that file and it just loops through. So fairly typical, just letting the computer do it for us. Like we did when we did our scripting examples earlier in the class. So again, it's finding a lot of stuff for Microsoft.com. You probably won't have quite as many. We did say cisco.com. Shouldn't be quite as many. Microsoft is, after all, pretty large, so a little bit sm smaller here. Looked like Microsoft had one, two, up to like a zillion. So not quite as many, but still we're getting a lot of results. But if you're working with a small company, it might be much smaller, like bulbsecurity.com doesn't really come up with much at all. So it could just sit here like this for a while and then come up with, I think it'll find FTP and www dot, but there's just not that many hosts in that case. So nothing to be alarmed about, it's just a smaller organization. If you do like small local banks and local businesses, they probably don't have that many hosts. So that gives us some additional targets. You may or may not even need to do this. I typically do unless my client tells me not to, I just give them an idea of what their internet presence is, but typically your clients will say these are the IP addresses you need to test, but you may find yourself doing a complete black box test where like where so and so dot com have at it, in which case something like this would be very useful.